the habitat of any biome depends on the climate of that region. We have seen that the climate of Arctic and Antarctic region is poles apart. So the plants that flourish in the Arctic region are very different from the plants that thrive in the Antarctic. Similarly, animals found near the North Pole are different from the animals found in the South Pole. Just like in any other biome, all the living organisms in polar biome too depend on each other for survival, thus forming a food chain. The flora and fauna of any biome, along with their physical environment, form an ecosystem of that particular biome. Thus, the plants and animals, along with other living organisms, living in the snow and ice-covered region of the poles, form the ecosystem of Arctic and Antarctic. The ecosystem of the Arctic and Antarctic is very strange. Like in Antarctic, there are very few land plants. As a result, most animals depend on oceans to provide food. So, phytoplanktons, a microscopic plant-like organism that lives on the surface of the ocean, forms the base of the food chain. These phytoplanktons are eaten by zooplankton, tiny organisms that live in the surface water. The zooplanktons are in turn eaten by fish, squid, mollusks and other animals. These in turn become the food for penguins and seals. In contrast to Antarctic, Arctic is home to many more species. As a result, Arctic region has two food chains, the marine-based food chain and the land-based food chain. The marine-based food chain is again based on phytoplankton. This food chain is very important for animals that come on land to breed, like the seabirds, seals and walruses. Lichens, algae and land plants form the bottom of the land-based food chain. At the top of this food chain are the meat-eaters like wolves, snowy owls, polar bears and humans. In between these two comes every other living organism from bumblebees and wolf spiders to reindeer. Not all animals can survive the freezing cold of polar region. All the creatures that live here have evolved special characteristics or have very well adapted to the chilly surroundings in order to survive. Even then, the animals of this region have to face great many challenges to keep themselves alive. In the freezing atmosphere of the polar region, the biggest challenge for staying alive is to stay warm. Many polar animals are warm-blooded. Just like we humans, these animals keep a constant body temperature, no matter how much the temperature of surrounding varies. Being warm-blooded allows animals to stay active even when their surroundings are freezing cold. Cold-blooded animals like lizards and frogs would become inactive and freeze here. So it is not surprising that very few lizards or frog venture into Arctic. And none can be found in Antarctica. Just as we humans wear thick cloths to keep us warm in winter, the animals too have layers of insulation around their body to preserve heat. Polar bears have thick fur coat. They also have layer of fat or blubber. The blubber acts mainly as a storehouse of energy 
for the tough period when food is hard to find. Along with providing energy, the blubber also helps the bear to keep the heat trapped inside its body. Seals and walruses also have blubber, but unlike land animals, they have an extra insulating feature. By changing their blood flow, they can keep their blubber layer cool while maintaining a warm temperature deep inside their body. Walruses have so much blubber on their body that they risk overheating when they come onto the land to rest and breed in large colonies on the Arctic coast. To lose weight, they blush and blood flows through the skin, turning their bodies bright pink. Walruses are also so strong that they can use their tough head to bash through ice up to 28 centimeters, that is, 8 inches thick. But sometimes the cold is so severe that fur and blubber may not be enough to beat the cold. In such cases, musk oxes of the Arctic tundra and the penguins of Antarctica may huddle together to help each other stay warm. The mammals that cannot stand the biting cold migrate from one place to another. For example, the reindeer migrates south at the end of the summer to escape the dark and freezing tundra winter. The musk ox living in the Arctic does not have to migrate to far away places to escape dark and chilly winter. It shifts its new grazing ground that is only a few miles away. As the distance between its summer and winter grazing grounds is not much, it saves a lot of energy. In summer, musk oxen eat sedges and willows on low-lying tundra. In winter, they travel few miles to ground that is free of deep snow. Here, they find food in the form of grasses that have been exposed by the Arctic winds. Unlike reindeers, the severe winter climate is not a problem for them as the shaggy coats of musk oxen are eight times warmer than sheep's fur that protects them well against harsh blizzards. There are times in Arctic when the blizzards don't go for a long, long time. Under this severe condition, the musk oxen are not able to feed themselves. So it is time for them to conserve whatever energy they have stored in their body. To lower down their need for food, they spend little time moving around and lie down together to deflect the wind. The less energy they use for moving, the more energy they have to maintain their body temperature. Under these circumstances, the musk ox is neither active nor has it gone under complete hibernation. Hibernation is a part of process of survival in all the biomes. It is a time period when there is short supply of food and the animals have to lie low so as to survive this difficult period. Sometimes this period can be really long. Some polar animals have to go into complete hibernation to escape from the chilly winters of the poles. They seek shelter, reduce their body temperature and become completely inactive. During hibernation, their heart beats more slowly and they breathe much less than they do when they are active and in normal condition. They don't get to eat and their body survives on reserves of stored fat. 
the grizzly bear is one of the largest hibernating mammals in the Arctic. They hibernate in large dens built by them. The den is a cozy place to spend winter. The bear's body heat combined with the body heat of its cubs keeps the den warm. As it prepares for hibernation, the bear builds up fat on its body which provides water as well as food for the long winter months. The hibernation process of Arctic squirrels is also interesting. As there are no trees in Arctic, these squirrels live in underground burrows. These burrows serve two purposes. They provide shelter from the cold climate and at the same time secure them from the attack of predators. The hibernation of ground squirrels is for short durations. For a particular time period, it curls into a ball and allows its body temperature to fall to that of its burrow. If the burrow gets really cold, then the squirrel's body freezes. In such cases, its brain stays awake and keeps its body temperature above the freezing point. All mammals need sleep, so after two weeks or so, the squirrel warms itself to normal body temperature, relaxes and falls asleep for some hours. After that, it is again ready for its next period of wakeful hibernation. Birds also form an integral part of polar biome, with greater number of birds living in Arctic than in Antarctic. There are several reasons for this. As we have seen, the climate in Arctic is less harsh and Arctic tundra is nearer to the lands. More varied habitats for breeding and feeding are found here. The birds spend few months of summer breeding in the Arctic and then fly away south for winter. Ravens, snow buntings, falcons, loons, sandpipers and various species of gulls are found here. There are many creatures that dare to face the chilly winter and stay where they are. These creatures use a variety of different tricks to survive. In Antarctica, penguins huddle together to keep themselves warm. The ptarmigan is one of the few Arctic birds that doesn't fly south for the winter and holds the record for the bird that spends winter closest to the North Pole. During winter, the ptarmigan changes from brown to white and sprouts fluffy feathers on its feet. It uses its feathered feet to dig tunnels in the snow where it is much warmer than in the air outside. Other than the ptarmigan bird, arctic hares, lemmings, caribou and arctic foxes also turn white in winter. Turning white helps these animals merge with the white snow and escape their predators. The ideal animal to survive the North Pole is the polar bear. It is 7 feet tall and weighs 540 kilograms. Its weight being equivalent to about 5 heavyweight boxers. Polar bear's lot of weight is just fat. Underneath the skin, polar bears have a blanket of blubber several centimeters deep. But blubber is only one layer of the bear's clothing. After it comes a cozy layer of wool. And on the outside, there is a thick fur coat made up of long, hard guard hairs. Sunlight is carried down the hair to the bear's body, helping to warm the skin. Along with the huge animals like polar bear, small creatures also make polar regions their home. 
Amphipod is a shrimp-like animal that lives in the ocean and is one of the Arctic's most ferocious little creatures. They are capable of eating a young human body in less than a day. Lots of insects and spiders have also made the Arctic tundra their home. They spend the winter resting in the form of eggs. These eggs are not killed by freezing. As soon as it is warm enough, the insects burst into activity. Mosquitoes hatch from tundra pools and flock in millions. The large number of other arctic insects includes butterflies, crane flies, grasshopper, black flies and bumblebees. Antarctica is extreme in various ways. It is the coldest, driest, windiest, darkest and highest continent on earth. Even though 70% of earth's fresh water is present in Antarctica, it is actually a desert. In winter, Antarctica doubles in size as the sea around it freezes. No other place on this planet is less hospitable to life than the Antarctic. Yet, scientists and explorers have dared to live there. People have lived within the Arctic Circle for thousands of years. Although people living across the Arctic are known by different names, we may refer to all the native people of the Arctic as Eskimos. Eskimos' life consisted of fishing and their catch included trout, salmon, cod and flatfish. Hunting was another aspect of their life and meat was the most important source of food. Although early Arctic explorers believe the Eskimos were simple people they were advanced in many ways. The ancient Eskimo tools and their knowledge of animals and plants were very important in allowing them to thrive in the Arctic. They were master craftsmen in hunting. Most importantly, they knew how to survive in one of the harshest places on planet Earth. Today, the world of modern Eskimo is a totally new world. Ever since man has conquered the poles, people have exploited Arctic and Antarctic in various ways and in the process, affecting the lifestyle of the Eskimos who were once isolated from the rest of the world. Today, the modern Eskimo lives a life like any other person anywhere on the earth. Today, Eskimos are not people wearing fur coats and huddling around fire inside their house made of ice, as we would imagine. The Eskimos have modernized. They too have adapted to the changing present world. Their ice houses have become more permanent. Transportation has changed the lives of Eskimos a great deal. Technology has transformed the way Eskimos hunt. Today, Eskimos use internet to keep in touch with their community members and also to make contact with the outside world. Eskimos have always had a lively culture. Much of it is based on their life as hunting people. They take out time to relax and enjoy themselves. Singing and dancing are very important in Eskimo communities and huge feasts are regular events. There is a tradition of holding joyous celebration at the end of every whaling season. The person who catches the most whale meat is flung up and down on a trampoline made out of walrus hide stretched over whale ribs. 
as per geologists antarctica may contain huge amounts of oil gas coal and other valuable minerals and to get their share of these vast resources many nations have tried to claim parts of the antarctic continent but they have not been recognized by the international community instead treaties have been signed by nations banning them from exploiting antarctica for any natural resource most of the land is polar desert covered in ice it contains very little that is green the name was given by a norwegian explorer named erik the red his intention was that if he made the country sound like nice place people would want to move there from iceland the few people who live in greenland inhabit the tundra region around the coast of the country Greenland now has its official name it is called Kalalit Nunnat which means Greenlanders country and is home to enormous Greenland National Park the largest protected area for wildlife in the world the future of arctic and antarctic is bleak and it might so happen that the coming centuries might not even get a chance to see these polar regions as their very existence is being threatened the warming earth is becoming a concern for the very existence of human life on this planet earth is heating up because of the carbon dioxide and other gases released into the atmosphere by people giving rise to global warming for polar regions global warming could be disastrous as the world warms up the ice of antarctica and greenland might begin to melt and run into the sea this would raise the sea level and the low lying coastal areas would disappear underwater Are we moving towards a future when the whole world will drown? The poles have remained untouched by humans for long. But as the natural resources have started to diminish because of heavy demand, the temptation to explore the richness of Arctic and Antarctic has increased. Alaska and Siberia have already been exploited to a great extent and they have produced vast amounts of oil and natural gas. The oil industry has made new roads and has constructed towns for their employees on the land that used to be wilderness. As a result, the people of the Arctic are becoming rich and their lifestyle is changing. Antarctic tourism too has grown about five fold in the last 15 years more tourists than ever before are visiting antarctica some in ships that are not designed for the harsh conditions 37552 tourists visited antarctic during 2006-2007 the majority of them arriving by sea the big question is is this right why some people think that this is a sign of progress for mankind others feel the whole modernization process of the arctic wilderness and oil spill due to exploration are a constant threat to the polar region The exploitation is not being done on a large scale but if the world starts to exploit the natural resources of the arctic full fledged then no one can imagine what effect that would have on the world's last untouched areas of wilderness 
a spill of heavy fuel oil would have a more significant environmental impact because the fuel dissolves in the cold water, making it exceptionally difficult to clean up. These effects might not be immediate, but sooner or later, our planet Earth might start to retaliate in its own way. Are we prepared to pay the price? For our immediate gain, can we put the future of our planet Earth and coming generation at risk? The future of the poles may not seem bright, but people around the world have started to take notice and are getting concerned about planet Earth. Not only that, they are coming forward in large groups to protest against the over-exploitation of natural resources. Today, large populations across the globe have understood that Earth is a fragile planet and we cannot just keep taking things out of it. Today, it is the moral duty of each individual to look after and take good care of our planet Earth. It is high time that we become wise enough to realize that the Arctic and Antarctic are among the greatest gems of the natural world. Let us all pledge to guard it like a precious jewel so that the Arctic and Antarctic continue to exist in the future. Or else, it might become a fairy tale for our future generations and they will be hearing stories like Once upon a time, there was a place on the earth covered with snow and ice called the Arctic and Antarctic.